Great. Very good. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Devin Rhodes, and I'm the Director of Alumni Relations. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening for What is Your Learning Style with Don Fritz Viet. Um, also from Susquehanna University, we have President Jonathan Green and our First Lady, uh, Ms. Lynn Buck. Uh, Melissa Kimura is also with us, as is Becky Dietrich and uh, Jody Swartz. So thank you, uh, my other Susquehanna uh, colleagues. I appreciate you being here as well. Um, before I turn the program over, um, I just want to let everybody know that we are going to use the chat feature uh, this evening. There's going to be some parts of the program that are interactive, um, so we will be able to use the chat feature for that. And then also, um, after the uh, uh, um, presentation, you'll be able to do some questions and answers through the chat as well, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, Throughout the, uh, throughout the evening. So it is now my pleasure to uh, introduce our moderator for this evening, uh, Andy Nagy, who is from the class of 2008. Um, at Susquehanna University, Andy majored in psychology. So Andy, this is perfect for you for tonight. Um, and currently is a senior volunteer engagement specialist for the American Red Cross. Um, Andy is also a uh, proud member of our alumni board. Um, so, Andy, it's all to you now. Thank you. Awesome. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Our speaker for this evening is Don B, class of 1986. At Susquehanna University, Don was a business finance major and minored in religious studies. She also holds a master's degree in training and development and currently works as an instructor at a nuclear facility. Throughout her career, she has trained adults across a variety of industries and fields, from nuclear safety and operations, to financial planning, to health insurance. Dawn also directs choruses of all ages in her free time. Um, understanding learning styles has been crucial for her to help others improve their learning experiences. And then Dawn is also a proud member of Susquehanna University's alumni board, uh, where we actually serve together. So it's a pleasure to, to know Dawn that way. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to her because she's who you came here to to hear today. So Dawn, the floor is yours. Greetings, greetings. Uh, Devin, just a question. I still have the practice session thing across my screen. Are you guys good to see? Yep, we're good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share um, just a old habits die hard. And I, um, I like to have something for folks to look at. So I'm gonna share just a, a document for folks to see and have uh, something to look at and some commonalities while you're hearing me yapping at you. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen and then you can see a little box with me talking in the corner. Um, so visual auditory kinesthetic learning styles. Thank you for coming. Welcome, welcome on this in central PA. It's snowing. We got three and a half inches today. So it's a great night to do something like this. Um, let, so when I was going for my master's degree um, a few years ago, this became one of the um, kind of mantras for things that I was trying, as I was trying to learn. Um, and so um, I get real excited about this. And, and the information behind it. Um, what I what really, it's about like pulling apart a piece of the model. Um, so we, we all have a mental model that we learn with, that we exist with. It's our, our, an internal piece of the external reality hypothesized. And it's how over the years our, our brain has, has uh, come to assimilate life. Well, learning is part of that and can be defined as a creation or modification or application. You can see it on the screen of that mental model. So um, Andy, I think we had some questions ahead of time. That, that is correct. Uh, we, we definitely did. So um, I know there were some uh, questions that came on early uh, about what can you do to facilitate learning and engagement when learners are overwhelmed, overworked, and unmotivated. 
Um, and that's just uh, someone thinking uh, from the context of family estate planning and business succession planning. And so there's, there's uh, a variety of questions that we have sprinkled throughout um, that uh, you know, we could we could chime in and ask, um, and then people could also ask in the in the chat, and we could bring those up. Okay, so let's. I'm just going to talk about this one. Um, so you said, you know, someone's overwhelmed, overworked, trying to learn. How do we how do we make application for different things, and perhaps um, specifically with do, having to do with financial planning or anything? Um, so what I would challenge us is that learning styles are a small piece of a bigger picture and um the adult brain is really you know a lot of what this has to do with so um we'll go in we're going to talk more about each of the learning styles and some of the um tools that you can use to help yourself um but um for me you know basically over the last couple of years i've been helping a lot my mom um passed away a little over a year ago and she was almost 91. And so, you know, one of the things, you know, when you would talk about overwhelmed, overworked, you know, trying to deal with a lot of different things, the big mantra for me was that there was a lot of times where I just had to force myself to focus and then I could do what I needed to do to get the job done. That's not a learning style. That's learning about you and how having self-realization um, and, and finding ways to make things work. And really that's, that's pretty much what I'm talking about today is, is I think when I have had these conversations and I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the things I've done with this as we go forward. Um, what I've really learned is that by having this conversation kind of opens up your brain and allows you to learn um, and think about learning. I mean, we, we are so busy trying to learn something, we don't necessarily take a step back and go, okay, how can I help myself learn this better? And that's really what I'm talking about today is just, you know, let's, let's look at it um, in a bigger picture. So for the adult brain, um, here's, here's some of the five basics. And this is every learning style, this is across the board. First, context matters. You've heard it said so many times, what's in it for me? The W-I-I-F-Y. So if we know the context, we can feed our brains. Um, so it's important if you're sitting in, in a session, regardless of whether it's a Bible study or you're going to your kid's school, um, find out why, what, what they're trying to get across that's going to speak to you. And, and you know, don't be afraid to, to go after that. Um, know that repetition and participation is crucial um, with whatever learning at whatever age and more so as adults. Um, it's important for us to, to repeat and also by active participating, asking questions, um, going through discussions. Um, know that if you are on the teaching end, whether that is coaching, whether that is doing financial planning, which I did, um, whether, you know, whatever, an eight minute attention span is about the most that a eight to 10 minutes is what, the, what a brain really does well and then it starts to wander. So um, switch gears every eight to 10 minutes. What I used to do when I was a financial planning, I'd come in, we'd talk, I'd do a little intro, and then I'd ask for something to drink. And if I had something to drink, I'd ask for a napkin, just because it gave them that, that little second to move on and do something different. Um, the other, uh, the next thing would be um, discovery and challenge. Always, always. Um, encourage folks to um, look for new discoveries. If they're in a session or, or you're in a session and you don't, don't quite get it or you haven't found your context, go after it, ask for that. Um, that that's certainly gonna be pretty helpful for anything. Um, and then always seek, uh, always share. The best for adults, the best way to know if you've learned something is to try and tell somebody else about it. And when you do that, um, you know, it, it solidifies in your brain what you've done and what you've learned. And then it, um, you know, it gives you, it, it really helps to fortify all that. Um, so, you know, just if you use these tools, you can find a way to apply this for yourself or someone else. 
and, and Don, I'm going to ch chime in uh, real quick if it's okay, because we did have a question. Okay. Someone specifically asking about um, what seniors might rely on to keep learning in a thinning neuronal field. And it's my understanding from what you just said that these five um, basics would assist with that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And and I I would love to say that I could help you with that, but that's a lot deeper than I was planning on going on today. So there's not, I'm not going to be able to speak to that too much, except for the information that I kind of just gave you. Um, and, you know, just, I, that's part of the reason, especially I noticed this with my mom, the more social she was, the better, the better retention she had on a lot of different avenues. So I think that that speaks to um, what we kind of just talked about. Now, what did I do here? Sorry. I have to go back to my, I'm lost. There we go. I got it. Okay. So then, then um, the next thing, and this is where context is important. What's in it for me? How might this influence my learning? What I'm asking you to do here is come along for the ride with me. Um, Cause I mean, for me, I'm always looking to learn. I'm always looking to find a different way to approach things. And um, I, I'm also challenging others to look at things from a different angle and, and you know, offering different opinions. I find myself doing a lot of brainstorming to see how we can problem solve things. <clears throat> so for me, um, I directed, um, I, while I was directing a men's barbershop course, I was asked to also help with a, a women's chorus. Uh, or a kids chorus. And these kids were um, learning disabled and um, physically disabled. They went, they belonged to a place here in Harrisburg or that's called CATRA, the Capital Area Therapeutic Riding Association. And every summer they would do a concert because the gal that ran that found out that most of these kids were so musically inclined. And I cannot tell you how many of them had perfect pitch. It was amazing. And so um, we would do things and I was always trying to figure out how can I help them learn better? How can I help them absorb this more um, and, and take it to another level? And the same thing with my barbershop and, the, and I directed a women's course after that. And so um, I went to a, uh, what's called Harmony University in 2007. And there was a guy at one of the seminars that I went to that he talked about um, kinesthetic learning. And I went, what's that? I knew kinesthetic, but with singing, it was trying hard to figure out how to apply that. And so what he would have people do is when he wanted them to sing more towards the front of their face, he would have them put his, their finger on their nose. And it was amazing how the sound shifted. Or he wanted, they wanted him to sing better, bigger, so he'd have them stand with, his, with their hands like this. And all of a sudden, their voices just got not just louder, but bigger. So um, to me, it was kind of like, okay, there's something there. Now, right after that, the next year, I started working in the training department at a nuclear facility. So now I'm trying to teach nuclear operators. And... I'm like, okay, so now I'm trying to take what I'm learning for that and apply it over here. Well, I was really fortunate that the manager, my manager um, invited me because he knew that I had just started the master's degree program. He said, listen, there's something you want to do, um, you know, that because we have been challenged to improve our training department. So uh, let's let's marry these two together and let's see what we can do. And so the self-assessment quiz that was available for all of you to take was exactly the same quiz that I gave for those gave to those operators. And I did this for eight years. Um, and first, I did it with the instructors. So all of the instructors did the self-assessment, and they learned what their learning styles were and or at least what the predominant one secondary was. And then we talked about um, what they can do, not only to help themselves learn better, but help their students learn better. And how can an, a visual learner talk to an auditory learner? And we, we, we talked about some of the things that you can do. And in some cases, it was just a matter 
of asking a question two different ways and you would reach the bulk of the learning styles in the room. Um, and so they played with that. And I have to tell you that um, what made me a believer to some degree in learning styles and just opening up your brain and increasing your self-awareness. So for those eight years, I saw about a dozen classes go through and we did a few things like um, number one, we took, we used to have seat assignments. We removed the seat assignments. We told everyone that they needed to, they could sit where they wanted to. But here's, here's where, here's the seats that are available, figure it out. Um, and even to that degree, people will sit where it helps their learning style. So uh, we'll get into that later and I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit more and you can ask me some of those questions. But um, ultimately, for those eight classes, the scores went up and it had as much to do with their awareness as it did the way the instructors changed how they were teaching because they used to teach death by PowerPoint. And, and it just, you needed to do something different. And they did, and we worked together to develop plans. And ultimately that was the win for me was that the scores went up. So, um, what I would like to uh, just talk about now, you know, is, is just, is there a right or wrong learning style? No, absolutely not. Um, it's, and in fact, I've taken this quiz now in the 13 years since I've had it in my hand, I've taken it five times and, and my learning style has changed. Um, my, my highest dominance has changed and, and depends on, on actually what, kind of where I've been in my career, how, how that's changed. So simply put, it's a way a person takes in the information. And um, as you probably found out, and, and maybe we'll get a chance to talk with some folks about what their scores were, um, sometimes people are almost even. So you have a good mix of all three. Um, sometimes there's, I've had cases where guys have been out of 30 points, they've been 22 kinesthetic. And then the rest is, you know, is, is just, you know, a mix of the other two. Um, so bottom line for me was in a lot of cases, we just it improved just the awareness and can improve uh, communication because you want to do something different. Andy, I think we had a question about, um, I think there was another question that we talked about using here? Yes, so there was a, a pre-submitted question um, that asks, what arguments do you have for the body of research that considers that learning styles such as the BAK and BARK are a myth? Some will argue that there are only learning preferences and a person can learn better when they encounter a learning style that is different from their preference. So um, I looked at some of that. And you know what, you could say that there's theories all over the board. Um, you know, you've got Kolb's theory and uh, there, there are others out there. Uh, for me, what kind of sold me here was, again, the self-awareness piece of this. Just um, kind of going through this exercise and being a little more self-aware about what your preferences are. And there's, there's the thing, um, it, I believe has been, you know, been crucial for this. So um, I'm going to take, I'm going to stop sharing because I would like to see some folks out there and, and see if we can find out. Andy, have you, um, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for aha moments in the self-assessments. Yeah, so for um, anyone who's attending uh, this particular session, if you'd like to share your aha moment, please go ahead and put that in the chat so we could uh, read uh, about your story and what you'd like to share. So this is kind of our opportunity to be interactive with Dawn while we have her. So I'm waiting to see if we've got any aha moments that people are willing to share here. Andy, can I put you on the spot? Did you? Yeah, go did ahead. You take the quiz. I, I did. Um, and my my aha moment was, um, well, I realized that I 
um, my scoring is showing that I'm a more of a kinesthetic learner. Um, and there's a huge gap between that and uh, the auditory learner for me, which explains why I uh, never did well in lecture style courses. And um, they never meshed with me back, uh, back in my SU days. Uh, so that was kind of finally realizing why that was. I thought I was just sleepy all the time, but no, it just was okay. not working for me. So um, we have a couple of responses here in the chat right now. Um, Julia said she got a, a visual learning style, which was expected, uh, but had no idea how much of a close second kinesthetic would be. That was an aha moment. Okay. Uh, Kristen shared uh, that she's more uh, visual than expected and absolutely zero for auditory. Wow. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a strong preference against auditory there, Kristen. <laughs> um, and, and Julia, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Devin chimed in and said that um, he had the same response as, as Ju uh, Julia in terms of uh, realizing that uh, he was visual with a second as kinesthetic. So uh, definitely some aha moments for people that maybe did not expect uh, their, their responses as, as they are, or maybe their preferences as strong as they are. I'd love to see what President Green or Lynn Buck, where they landed. Oh, well, that was perfect timing then. Uh, oh. President Greens just came in. Um, okay. He said he found one or two questions to be a tie. As a musician, uh, he was surprised that auditory was only a four. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Great point. Yeah. You, you automatically think that musicians would be auditory, and that's not necessarily the case. Right, right. There's a perfect that's example. Cool. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, we just got one more in. Um, Gigi reply, or, uh, responded, strong visual, close second auditory, but absolutely no kinesthetic. Oh, wow. So, oh, that's yeah, kind of very cool. Very interesting. Yeah, that is. OK. Opposite so I'm going to go back. Right there, so. <laughs> I, and of course, this, when you share, sorry, I'm going to blip through this real quick and get back to where we, where we want to be. So. Um, what I'm going to do is just talk about, did I go past the page? Uh-oh. What did I lose? Nope. That's where you are. Right. Okay. So um, then we'll just talk a little bit about each of the, the, um, the, the styles and, and um, I'll give you a little bit of, of detail. Um, so for visual. Some of the things that are obvious are um, you want to see pictures, diagrams, demonstrations, displays. Um, you like flip charts. Um, you use phrases such as show me or let's look at that, as opposed to, um, you know, I you you definitely want to see it in front of you so that you know what you're what you're looking at. Um, Don, I can, Don, can you just yep. flip to one more slide? Yep. Hang on. Because we're still seeing our discussion slide. That's all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And For those and who are the visual, they need your presentation. There you slide. go. There we go. <laughs> and this is a mishmash. So um, these are people who work with this is, and I blew it. This is the old presentation, but that's okay. These are the people who work from lists and written directions and instructions. So there's, um, there's your, a lot of what your visual is going to be. So for me, um, and I said I was going to talk about this, so I'll throw it in, in here. So uh, in, in our operator experience, we had a class of 15 and we ended up with mostly kinesthetics and visuals. But the interesting part about that was where they sat. We had two auditories. They sat up in the front in the first two seats right in front of the instructor. Auditories found they, they needed to hear clearly and be unobstructed by other stuff around them. The visuals, um, tended to sit in the middle and on the sides. They wanted to be able to see everything that was going on. And then the kinesthetics tended to sit towards the back. Okay. Um, tended to sit towards the back and, and in the middle because, um, I'll go back here. Sorry, I'll go back here for a minute. So um, the kinesthetics, they could sit anywhere. Um, their distractions were an issue, and sometimes they were the distractions. So one of the things I talked about with, with 
with kinesthetics is they like, have you guys ever seen one of these? These are those spinners. So spinners, click pens, anything like that, that's a kinesthetic. It's not an ADHD thing. It's not an AD thing. It's, it's, a, it's a actually a kinesthetic learner. When they are doing something with their hands, they feel better about it. Um, and that helps their brain process. So I have I I knew some of the students in this class that um, would tell me that they actually had gone through ADHD things when they were kids, and the doctors would say nothing, and it was the visual, it was the it was the kinesthetic piece to their brain. So um, let's go back to I'm gonna I'll finish up with a little bit more on the visuals. Um, some things you can do if you're teaching a visual is um, what, if you give handouts, leave lots of white space. So the visuals, it's very similar to kinesthetics. They like to take notes and they like to have the white space to take the notes. Um, at, in, get asked questions frequently. And that's as much an adult learner as it is any learning style um, because it draws folks back in and, and helps keep their attention. Um, use illustrations whenever ever possible, allow them to draw the pictures. One of the things that um, we did in that operators class was that they would have to um, take tests that were purely just, you know, three hours worth of just sitting there looking at multiple choices. And so what we did for them ahead of time is we gave them painter's tape, and a pack of pumps and motors and said, we want you to draw the feed water system. And we'd, we'd have a big piece of the carpet available and they would go over in teams and they would lay out the feed water system or whatever system it was that we needed. And because A, it fed the kinesthetics because they were doing it. And then it fed the visuals because they were drawing it very purposefully. And um, that helped to reinforce. And then the auditories, we always made sure that they were not together. And then they could, they were capable of helping with doing some of that, but then they talked it through. And it was really interesting because when the instructor would come around and say, tell me about your feed water system, the auditory was the one that did the talking and did the explaining. So as I said, with an adult learner, you know it better when you can tell somebody else. And that's the auditories tended to do that. So let's talk more about auditories. Um, transfer of information again through the spoken word. Um, phrases like tell me or can we talk it over? Um, they often talk to themselves. So one of the things that in the um, regular requalification, so the operators that were in the field, um, they were in every six weeks for training. And there were two of them and they were in two different classes, but they were very distinctly auditory. And um, no, and I'm not trying to show the slides anymore. I'm kind of just talking. <clears throat> um, they, one of the things we did with them is the, that the instructors allowed them to do, or we kind of facilitated, was that we moved, um, they went and sat in the front corner of the room for the exams and we'd give them earplugs and they would sit there and the one guy would literally mutter the questions to himself. And, um, and that was how he answered it. He was always pulling on his hair, which I thought was funny. And that's a whole different attribute. But that was how he got through it by just um, telling, reading the question out loud. And when he had earplugs, he could hear himself better. So I applied that to singers. Um, I, invited, I invited those that I figured out that were auditory learners to put their fingers in their ears or to bring earplugs along. And when we would do exercises that we were trying to do work on a particular singing skill, I'd give them each a minute to kind of work on it on their own. And they, they would stick their fingers in their ears so they could hear themselves better, do what they needed to do. And then if I'd say, would anybody, you know, and ask, I'd try to draw people in to, to do or, or show what they had just learned, then they usually felt more confident than if, if I, you know, if they didn't do it that way. So that was kind of neat. Auditory learners. So if you're gonna work with auditory learners, 
Um, one of the things is, again, questioning. Questioning's across the board. Again, I think that's more an adult or even a child. You know, that's just a brain. It's how a brain wants to, to work. So ask questions or, or, and or ask, get them to ask questions. Draw as much information out of them for an auditory learner. Get them to speak it through with you so they can hear themselves talk it through. Um, activities for auditories, brainstorming, buzz groups, Jeopardy, things like that are really good for them because again, they're getting to practice and say the things that are going on in their brains. Um, and with auditories, you want to leave plenty of time to do a debrief. Again, want to give them the chance to talk through that. Andy, got any questions? Yeah, Before we, we actually do. We've got one uh, coming through that's starting to touch on, uh, I think, where you're going with this presentation. And that is, uh, does the age of the participants impact how they learn? Not that I found with the, with the kids and with the groups. I will tell you that my pet peeve when I started to learn about learning styles was at in the, in the elementary school level <clears throat> where they were the, the kids in some cases when I got them in the evenings and I only had them one day a week that we were doing these rehearsals, the, the parents would start to ask me questions because they would see, you know, of course they're at a fun activity. We're singing, we're dancing, we were, you know, doing, we're performing. So they, the kids were having a good time. But when I started to employ some of what I had learned with this, with these learning styles and, and kind of tap the kids differently, then the parents started to ask me questions and they would tell me about things that happened with their kids in school. And I, it really, it really got to me when I realized that some of the teachers, instead of allowing for different learning styles or working with the different learning styles, trying to force the kids into their learning style. And so if a kinesthetic was fidgeting in the back of the room, what is what, you know, we've all heard the stories. I had a kid when I was in school that they dragged him out by his ear because he couldn't sit still. If you adapt to them, I mean, that's one of the things that I used to do with those kids. And I did it with the adults too, is I would bring gadgets or I would invite them to bring gadgets with them up onto the risers. And just the deal was, as long as you don't make a lot of noise, but bring whatever it is that will help you. So when we're in the learning portion and not the performing portion of rehearsal, you can, you can do what helps you feed your brain. So that that's the only thing that 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 um, I don't I don't see a huge difference. But sometimes with kids, it is harder to see what their learning style is. I'll talk about I have a girlfriend um, that does some homeschooling. So I'll talk about I'll talk about her here in a minute too. Any other questions, Andy? Yes. Um the uh there's kind of a, a follow-up question to that and it is uh does an individual's specific field that they might be working in play a role in their learning for example an engineer versus an artist interestingly enough you will tend to see different learners be attracted to different fields so, you know, for example, with my, with the operators in, I had, we had um, in those eight years, and I'm trying to do a quick ad in my head, that had to be over 50 people that we saw. I would have, I'd say there were five auditories in all of that. So less than 10% were auditories for, and when I'm talking operators, those are the guys who are flipping switches and maneuvering things. So. We had a lot of kinesthetics. Um, almost right behind them were the visuals. And then we had very few auditories. And in fact, I had an auditory when he come to me after the session where he learned what he was. He came at the end of the day and he was petrified because he thought that he should not be doing this job. If everybody else in the class is a kinesthetic or visual, then, then this isn't going to work for me and I shouldn't be here. And I kind of did the reverse on him and said, you know, do you feel comfortable here? Do you like what you're doing? He said, yes. And I said, okay. 
So then this just means you're learning differently and you need to challenge the instructor to feed your brain. Feed it the way you need to feed it so you can continue to do your job. And it was kind of interesting because ultimately he, um, in the last couple of years that he was there, he was kind of the one, and this is a whole different personality. This has personalities, not learning styles. He was the, he was the gatherer. He was the one who could talk to all the guys whenever the stuff was happening and get them together. So it was, it was kind of interesting because again, he, he, he was the one who became kind of the talker. Um, so I, no, I don't, I, you know, I mean, I, I think it's the reverse. I think kind of your learning style or maybe your personality drives you more towards what you're, what you're doing. Um, I think President Green's observation about being not an auditory learner is kind of interesting. I did see a lot of kinesthetics doing singing. We had our auditories and nine times out of 10, my auditories were my perfect pitch people, which I thought was really interesting, but that doesn't say that kinesthetics and, and you know, I mean, our, our bodies and our brains are so many different gifts combined together that it's really cool. Anything else, Andy, before we go to kinesthetic description? Yeah, there was actually just a follow up on the the, the question about age. Um, this per, the person who asked the question was just clarifying that they are thinking specifically about like differences between maybe baby boomers versus G Generation X or Generation Y. Have you have well, you observed any of that? I, I that I can't speak to because the bulk of the people that I saw were Gen X or Gen Y. They were not baby boomers. The baby boomers were the instructors and we were teaching the Gen X and Gen Y. Um, and honestly, part of the reason why, at least at the nuclear plant, why they needed to change away from death by PowerPoint was because the Gen Xers hated death by PowerPoint. And if you've got a lot more kinesthetics in the classroom, guess what? They're not, well, they don't want to sit there like you, Andy. They don't want to be lectured at. They want, they want something different. So this, I hope that's helping with answering some of the questions. So let's talk about the kinesthetics. Um, Hands-on, like to experiment. Here's a funny that, that a lot of us attribute to, to certain. They never like to look at instructions. They like to do first, and then and when it doesn't work, then they go back and look at the instructions. We attribute that to a different character, set of characteristics, but that happens to be a kinesthetic learner. Um, during lectures, they wanna take notes just like the visuals do. When reading, they'll tend to scan the material first and then go back for the details. The visuals will read it in depth. Um, they'll use phrases like, let me try, as opposed to, let me look at it. Um, so I have a girlfriend who um, has eight children that she homeschools. And um, I was talking about learning styles one day and, and when we were on our way home from choir practice. And she, uh, she just, she said she's having some real uh, adventures with a couple of her kids. And I said, well, what are they doing? And she said, well, when it comes time to studying, they don't like to be in the room with their brothers and sisters. And she really tries to struggle because she wants to be able to moderate what they're doing. So I said to her, have you ever tried earplugs or earphone, you know, with, with, you know, some the right kind of whatever music they were. And she looked at me and she said, well, the one of them just asked me for that the other day. And I said, that one's an auditory learner, probably they hearing the din of eight children in the same room is too much for them to handle. Give them that and see if it doesn't help. And so that's, that's one of the things she did. There's a couple others that um, she's kind of figured out are probably visual learners. So um, that's where she uses, she's, got a, she's now got a big chalkboard up on the one wall and she writes where she gets them to write up on the chalkboard. And um, they, they really like, of course, working on the computer. So they were blessed that somebody donated some tablets for them this past year. So all the kids have tablets. And it's funny, if I go over there at, during, while she's doing class, I, can, I know who the, the visual learners are because they've got the tablets in front of them and they're playing. The kinesthetics like the tablets too, but guess what they're doing? They want the ones with the touch screens because they're messing and, and putting the notes in and doing. 
So it's pretty easy to kind of pick up what kind of learner sometimes it is if you just watch the, the kids' general habits. Um, so kinesthetics to integrate them. So if you're gonna be the one that's up in front or one that's working with them, some things to note um, is, and this is, this is as much an adult learner as it is a kinesthetic. Get them to take notes. I think this is true for anybody. If you engage more of your senses, your eyes, your ears, touch, your mouth, you're gonna remember things better as an adult learner. Kinesthetics tend to do that well because they want to be writing. They want, kinesthetics give them colored pens, colored highlighters, um, the spinners, koosh balls, um, pens. If, if you know, the clicking of the pen doesn't annoy you, you know, give it to them. Otherwise ask them to do something a little different. Um, they also do well, like when we used to do the breakout activities with, you know, feed water with painter's tape and pumps on the floor, we would turn music on for that period of time. Now, we had to be careful because the auditories would tend to have issues with that. So they, we situated them the furthest from where the music was. The kinesthetics we could put right near it and that didn't bother them at all. And in fact, helped them because they kind of kept the beat while they were, while they were, you know, going through their process. So um, trying to think, oh, I know, there's one more point I wanted to make. So I, when I was working with the, with the men barber shoppers, um, we used to do a series of different activities. And the one guy at one point said to me, because I tried to get them off the risers so that they weren't standing up there the whole time and allow them to move around. So we used to do things where we would move with the beat while we were singing the songs. And one guy one night said to me, you know, my wife always wants to know why I'm so tired when I get home. And it's because I tell her that I feel like I'm doing basic calisthenics like I did back in high school. So, um, you know, I mean, it, I guess there's different ways to go about different things. And that's half the fun. So let me go back. I'm going to try and find the last page of the presentation here real quick and see if I can um, wrap this up. Um, Andy, do you have any questions out there while I'm doing this? We didn't get any more uh, in the chat right now, um, but we did have um, something that was uh, submitted earlier on uh, prior to the presentation that I, you know, we're hoping that you could answer here. And that is, are there any noticeable correlations or relationships between a person's learning style and their listed results from other assessment types, such as the Myers-Briggs, uh, the DISC assessment, et cetera? Um, there are research papers out there that will do that. So if you want to go and you know absorb yourself in some of that, um, the Kolb theory is probably the one that um, is talked about most in association with, with the VAK or the VARK. Um, and um, the other thing is um, a theory about um, NLP eye movements, which um, is kind of intriguing because you can actually Google it. There's a really cool video out there that I was just watching um, that the guy talks about um, if, you, if, if a person, when you ask a person a question, and they look up, that's their visual part of their brain. When they look side to side, it's the auditory part. And when they look down, it's the kinesthetic. And there's a difference between left and right and what all of that means. But I thought it was really interesting how he kind of tied that right back in. Um, but again, the others are out there. And you know what? Everybody's got a theory about how we learn um, and, and how it can be applied. And um, this is the one that spoke to me. And it may not be the one that speaks to you, but there are others. Um, happy to answer, you know, I mean, you know, we're gonna at the end, we'll give my email address. And if somebody else has any questions, I do have some of those research papers. And I do have even the one about VAK learning styles being just Boulder Dash and that really not applicable. So if you wanna see any of those, I'd be happy to share them with you. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just kind of connect the dots back here at the end. Um, so think, you know, as an adult brain, adult learner, feed your brain. Think 
think about it, pair what, what you've learned with what you know, and then try and share it. Um, and, and that will truly give you a good test to see if, if you've learned it as well as you think you have. And it, and it just helps you retain it. Um, we talked about the self-evaluation exercise. Um, I think Devin's gonna talk about this at the end, but I, I gave him kind of a, there's another piece to this that talks about all the stuff that I went through here. If you're this, here's some things that you can do. Um, so, you know, kind of application when the rubber hits the road. Um, appease your brain. I call it a, they call it a primitive brain in here, but it's really the, the, the basic core of, of where you are. And once you kind of are a little more self-aware about how you learn, don't be afraid to try and feed that. And hopefully some of what um, is gonna be in this, what I've talked about and what is gonna be in this attachment will help. Um, and then engage the learning styles. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, I, can, I will answer any other questions or again, if you have other questions, um, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking and let Devin and Andy take over from here. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Don. Um, that was that was great. Um, and I do want to remind uh, participants that, again, if you have any questions, feel free to add those into the chat and we could ask Don now. Um, or uh, sounds like she'll be providing her, her contact information if anybody wants to follow up later. Um, we do have um, a, a statement that came through the chat as well as a question that, that seemed to kind of go hand in hand here, Dawn, that I could ho uh, we're, we're hoping you could address. And that is um, people questioning whether someone could adapt, um, or, or once they know their learning style, how do they adapt what they're doing in their activities to, to make sure that they're getting the best um, you know, information and, and learning uh, as best as possible. And the specific example that was given, like a busy parent who has little time uh, to read, how could they use the information from the assessment and, you know, apply that moving forward? Sure. So um, one of the things that um, Devin is going to send out to everyone once we're done, probably tomorrow, is <clears throat> it's a, a just a, it's just a couple of page are called the um, VAK learning styles and uh, explained. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through each of the kind of learning styles and and talk about um, you know a lot of what what I discussed, but give you some more concrete details on some things you can do. Um, and then at the very bottom of that, I reference where that came from. And there's a website called businessballs.com. Um, and they have a whole section on VAK. So they can, um, you can, you know, go there if you want to, but that'll be on the, the handout that Devin sends out to everybody. Awesome, thank you. Um, and there is a, another comment uh, for you, Don, in, in the chat, and that is, uh, you might be interested in Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Um, so that might be something that goes hand in hand with this. You're nodding your head. I'm assuming that's familiar to you. Oh, yes. Awesome, awesome. So uh, are there any other questions? Again, please feel free to put those in, in the chat if you have anything. We'll wait and see if any come in and otherwise uh, we could um, you know wrap up for this evening uh, but this is a, a very helpful uh, presentation Don I think this is you know very interesting we appreciate you taking your time uh, today to share this with us um, and to connect with uh, fellow Susquehannans uh, for this this information um, this is a lot of fun it, they absolutely are. Um, and, and so I mean with that with that said I do want to share with everyone um, we will continue to have alumni presentations like this. Um, you can find the information for, for joining these uh, right on uh, the SU alumni website, which is just suAlum.com. And the information on all the upcoming sessions is there. So you could definitely find some more information uh, here. Um, hold on, I think we do have a, a comment that did uh, uh, just come in. 
Um, Leslie indicated that this was an excellent uh, presentation. Um, Leslie appreciates when others recognize different styles and honor those learning styles. Um, Leslie said that, uh, Dawn, you are the best. Uh, we have a lot of learning styles in our family and adapt accordingly. So uh, there's a kudos to you. And, and it sounds like this is very timely information for people. So, um, you know, again, thank you. Thank you for that information. Um, I do wanna also share uh, with participants, um, again, Dawn mentioned uh, a, a handout that will be going out. So that will probably be emailed in the next couple of days um, to participants. So you could go ahead and, and uh, be on the lookout for that information to become available. And this session is uh, being recorded and will be shared on our YouTube channel. So if you need to reference it later on, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Again, just give us a couple of days to, to get that information up there on the web. Um, and finally, just a, a, a plug, um, just a, a sneak peek that coming up uh, in, in a few short days is our 1SU uh, campaign that's coming. So that is our annual day of giving. And we want to, uh, you know, let you know that that is coming, get excited. There's lots of uh, fun activities planned for that. And we're hoping that everyone will participate. So um, with that, uh, Dawn, I don't know if you have anything else that you wanted to add. I do not just that, you know, this has been a lot of fun. I wish I could have seen the faces. Um, but I also know, you know, Devin is out there for, for us. Becky is there. So if you want to reach out to either of them, um, and I think in the email that Devin sends out, he'll put my email address in there so that you can get a hold of me directly if you have any other questions. But um, again, just be more aware of, of how you think and, and open up your brain. And it's amazing what you'll come up with. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, please be safe. I know there's some uh, nasty winter weather affecting uh, many of us here uh, on the East Coast. So uh, please keep that in mind and we'll hope to see you at the next session. Go SU!